Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Devan County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 95. This is the Friday, April 8th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. At number two, Run, Rose, Run by Dolly Parton and James Patterson. A singer-songwriter goes to Nashville seeking stardom, but is followed by her dark past. At number three, The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn, the second book in the Bridgerton series. Kate Sheffield gets in the way of Anthony Bridgerton's intent to marry. At number four, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. And at number five, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series, and she uncovers a horrifying truth. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How Trauma Affects the Body and Mind and Innovative Treatments for Recovery. At number two, Will by Will Smith with Mark Manson. The actor, producer, and musician tells his life story and lessons he learned along the way. At number three, The Storyteller by Dave Grohl. A memoir by the musician known for his work with Foo Fighters and Nirvana. At number four, 10 Steps to Nanette by Hannah Gads. The stand-up comedian from Australia details difficult experiences and the creation of her breakthrough show. And at number five, Against All Odds by Alex Kershaw. The story of four soldiers who received the Medal of Honor for their service during World War II. Our first recommended read for this week is nonfiction. It's the new book, The Beauty of Dusk, on vision lost and found by Frank Bruni. When New York Times columnist Bruni awakes one morning with the vision in one of his eyes blurred, his entire world is turned upside down. Bruni a man who relies on his sight as a reader and writer, learns that a stroke has damaged his optic nerve and that his other eye may also be in danger. It's a point in his life when he has to make the decision to wallow in fear or explore his options. And, thankfully, Bruni throws himself into an investigation. A friend's comment... When one eye closes, another opens, sums up Bruni's journey. As he visits specialists and enlists in experimental programs, he also tracks down and interviews people who have refused to let their physical limitations limit their dreams. Bruni is inspired by the optimism of a college friend with Parkinson's disease, he talks with a blind comedian with a successful stand-up routine, a blind politician 
who is becoming a priest, and a blind swimmer who has set records. Everywhere he perceives gratitude, optimism, hope, and courage in his interviewees, leading to a shift within himself to compassion and appreciation. The result is a book about vision loss that becomes testimony to human courage, a moving memoir that offers perspective, comfort, and hope. And that's the book list review. Our second recommended read for the week is the new thriller, Once a Thief, by Christopher Reich. In Edgar finalist Reich's heart-pounding fourth outing for freelance London spy Simon Risk, Risk's talent for restoring vintage Ferraris puts him in harm's way. The 1963 Ferrari that his client just sold for $102 million didn't have the original gearbox, and the buyer's representative, Sylvie Bentoncourt, demands that Risk present her with the gearbox or be charged a $10 million fee with the violent or else supplied by her thuggish assistant. A consultation with a friend at Lloyd's of London reveals that Bentoncourt has a reputation for buying up valuable items from art to real estate with money that's unlikely to be legitimate. Risk has little choice but to try to recover the gearbox. Meanwhile, a bank manager in Switzerland has been killed with a car bomb, and his daughter Anna Bilt sets out to find his killer. Some scenic locales, including Mediterranean islands, serve as backdrops to the link quests of Risk and Bilt. Reich combines great action with surprises readers won't see coming. One doesn't have to care much about cars or high finance to enjoy this cinematic thriller. And that's the publisher's weekly review. And on a reader's note, as mentioned, this is the fourth book in the series. If you'd like to start reading the series from the beginning, check out book one, The Take. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation for the week, it's the new novel, The Mozart Code, by Rachel McMillan. The audio is read by Angharda Price. McMillan spins a gripping story of Cold War espionage as two British operatives, in a marriage of convenience, become immersed in a dangerous mission. In 1946, Simon Barrington, illegitimate son of the aristocratic Barringtons of Sussex, works in Vienna to uncover the secrets of the Eternity spy ring. Meanwhile, he pines for his wife, a lady Sophie Huntington Villers, a woman he's loved for years, despite the strictly platonic terms of their marriage, which was engineered to save Simon's inheritance. Sophie is also in Vienna, using the code name Starling to hunt down rare antiques and artifacts for the highest bidder. After one of Sophie's contacts dies mysteriously, Sophie is contacted by a client seeking Mozart's death mask an artifact that Sophie is not sure exists, and the search plunges her into danger. Simon fears for her safety when he learns of a double agent, leading him down an equally thorny path in his efforts to uncover the traitor. Macmillan's vivid descriptions of a post-war Vienna add a lure to this simmering romantic mystery. Readers will be riveted from the very first page. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. 
Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation for this week, it's the new novel The Unseekable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. The audio is read by Mae Whitman. When Greta James' mother dies of a sudden blood clot in her brain, Greta, a rising rock star, is shocked. Her mother was the guiding light in her life, coming to all Greta's shows and steadfastly supporting her. Greta flies home from a show in Berlin immediately, but it's not enough for her father, who is resentful of Greta's career and absence. In an effort to reconcile, Greta agrees to accompany her father on an Alaskan cruise, which was supposed to be a celebration of her parents' anniversary. While there, Greta disassociates herself from her famous persona and learns about her own humanity through a whirlwind relationship and a return to the music that has propelled her through her life. Smith's first book for adults, after eight successful young adult novels, is a page-turner. Smoothly written and engaging, exploring themes of grief similar to Rebecca Surley's One Italian Summer, but through the wholly different and beautiful setting of Alaska. Smith delivers a satisfying read for book clubs, adventure lovers, and musicians. And that's the book list review. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the new Ken Burns documentary on Benjamin Franklin, which came out in its entirety earlier this week and can be streamed now from PBS. And basically, it's a Ken Burns documentary, four hours long, chronicling the life of Benjamin Franklin. It explores the revolutionary life of one of the 18th century's most consequential figures, whose work and words unlock the mystery of electricity and help create the United States. And I'm a big history fan, so I know a little about Franklin. He was born in 1706 and died in 1790, so he lived throughout most of the 18th century. And just that little blurb about him doesn't do his life justice. He was certainly a very interesting guy and really a renaissance man. He could do so many different things. So I highly recommend Ken Burns' Benjamin Franklin, available through PBS now. Our second streaming recommendation for this week walks hand in hand with a book I recommended last week. It's the Pieces of Her TV series, available through Netflix. Last week I recommended the book that this is based on, also called Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. This series was created by Charlotte Stout and stars Tony Collette, Bella Heathcote, and Jessica Barden. Based on the best-selling 2018 novel of the same name by Karen Slaughter, this Netflix original series features Academy Award nominee Tony Collette as a seemingly normal mother whose dark history is brought to light after a mass shooting at a local diner. Shocked that her mother could so effortlessly eliminate the threat, her daughter begins to piece together the remnants of her mother's past. So if you're looking for a thriller mystery, check out pieces of her. Our third streaming recommendation for this week is the drama miniseries Stay Close, starring Kush Jumbo, Richard Armitage, and Daniel Francis. This one's available through Netflix. It's a British crime drama series, a miniseries, that holds a lot of promising characters. Megan Pierce, a suburban mom hiding a murky past. Michael Broom, a detective still haunted by a cold case from 17 years ago. And Stuart Green, a local husband and father who disappeared without a trace. When another man goes missing on the anniversary of Stuart's disappearance, Broom takes the case. But it quickly becomes apparent 
that the two cases are intertwined. So this is a crime drama thriller. Moving along to our Hoopla recommendation for this week, I'm going to recommend the movie So Cold the River. This is a chilling, suspenseful adaptation of the New York Times bestseller So Cold the River by Michael Corita. In the film, acclaimed documentary filmmaker Erica Shaw is hired by Alyssa Bradford Cohen to profile her dying father-in-law, the enigmatic millionaire Campbell Bradford. Erica is presented with a substantial sum of money and a relic, an antique bottle filled with water from a local spring. One of the few clues connecting Bradford to the town he once dominated. While researching Bradford as a guest of a massive opulent resort with a dark past, Erica meets unofficial town historian Anne McKinney, fanatical intern Kelly Lynn, and hotel maintenance worker Josiah, a descendant of Bradford's, who reveals the familial curse of mysterious deaths and suicides. Seemingly possessed by the relic, Erica begins drinking from the antique bottle, experiencing terrifying visions and, ultimately, unleashing unspeakable evil. Can Erica make her way through the darkness? Or is Campbell's evil undercurrent too strong? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. And of course, since movies are kind of short, you might also read the book, which interestingly has a male protagonist. This one is female, and I like strong female characters, not surprisingly. So we've got a recommendation there of the movie, So Cold the River, and also the book, So Cold the River. Moving on to the next half of this video cast, which is about the library its programs and services and holdings, AKA materials. Kicking this section off with next week at the library, I'm gonna briefly go over the events happening at or through the library for the week in front of us. That's the week of April 11th through the 16th, 2022. This information can also be found online through the library's website. If you go to sclibrary.org and then just click on the calendar link that you'll see on our homepage. Registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified. You can register online, by phone, or by dropping by the library. On Monday, April 11th, 2022, there are no events or activities going on in the library. Happy Monday and happy reading. On Tuesday, April 12th, we have five programs in library land, starting out with Adult Scrabble, from 9 to 11 a.m. The location of this program is the library's reading room. Then we have coffee, tea, and English online vocabulary from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. The location is Zoom, so you do have to register for the program to get the Zoom link. Our third program of the day is Miss Sue's Online Storytime, always a popular program. It runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m on Facebook. Our fourth program of the day is Coffee, Tea, and English Online Conversation. The location is Zoom. That runs from 10.30 to 11 a.m. And also on Tuesday, April 12th, we have a program that is full, so you can't register for this month's program, but I want to bring your attention to it because it's a neat series for kids and it is a recurring series. It's the drive through series. And that is pretty much what it sounds like from 6 to 7 p.m. Once you register for the program, you drive by the library and Miss Sue will be out front and will hand you the packet with the materials for this month's craft. This month, it's salt dough, Easter eggs, and bird kites. Next time, it'll be something different, something seasonal. And it's, it's a fun thing. You can take the packet home and then whenever it's convenient, sit down with your kids and do the craft of the month. As I said, this particular event is full, but watch the calendar online for future events. Or if you have questions about future drive through events, contact Sue McConnell at the library. On Wednesday, April 13th, we have two programs in the library. The first is Mei Zhang, 
which runs from 1 to 3 p.m. and is held at the library in one of the community rooms. And then from 6 to 8 p.m. we have the weekly at Corning Adult Writers Group. This is a hybrid program. You have to register for it. It's held both at the library and via Zoom, unless there's inclement weather, and then occasionally Michelle will just have it via Zoom. But you want to touch base with Michelle Wells to join the Corning Adult Writers Group. Ah, yes. I forgot the little ball. There it is. Well, on Thursday, April 14th, we have two events in library land. We have Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club from 10 to 11.30 a.m. The location is via Zoom. And then we have a full event from 6 to 7 p.m. So you can't register for this one, but again, it's part of a series. And I want to bring your attention to the series. It's the Tween to Go series. So this is like the children's program earlier in the week. You register for the program. And then you drive by the library between 6 and 7 p.m. on the night of the program and pick up the crafting packet that you can then take home and your young adults can create the craft of the month at their convenience. So for future tween to go programs, check our calendar or contact our head honcho of all things young adult at the library, Kayla Crane. On Friday, April 15th, we've got three items to bring your attention to. The first is the launch of the monthly recipe with Michelle Wells for April. The location you can access the recipe is her writer's blog, which is located at melorajohnson.wordpress.com. And of course, the recipe is available all day and afterwards, too. And then the second program of the day is the Science Time Online with Miss Abby which is from 10 to 10.30 a.m. The location is Facebook. And then from 1 to 1.30 p.m., a program you're all familiar with if you're watching this, Library Connections, makes its a debut each week on Facebook and via YouTube. And those are the programs for the week that ends on Friday, April 15th. And here we have our library program contacts. If you have questions about any of the programs, being held in library land, touch base with the appropriate program contact. Have questions about this video cast or library programs or services? Give us a call. You can reach the library at area code 607-936-3713. Library hours, always an important thing to know. The library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we are closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of useful information on our website. To offer you a Cliff Notes version today, I'm just going to talk about three sections of our homepage that will allow you to access cool stuff. The first is the link that says calendar on our homepage. If you click that or tap it, you'll be redirected to our calendar of events where you can register for programs and see what's going on both in the library and also the remote programming we have. If you click on the word catalogs, a menu will open that will allow you to access all the library's catalogs for both physical content like print books and digital content like ebooks. And then if you click on the resources menu link, seen at the top of the page there, also bordered in red, a menu will open. And you can do a bunch of stuff through that menu. You can register to vote. You can access anti-racism resources. But today I want to direct you to the research and learning page on our website. So that's the third option on the resources menu, research and learning. And if you click or tap that, the research and learning page will display. And this lists some of the most popular databases that we offer, otherwise known as online research resources, but I find that a mouthful. So basically these are credible research resources, which I'm gonna to refer to as databases from now on. And these are available to you as a card holder, but they're not free to everyone everywhere. You get them as a card holder, but the library and or the library system pays for these. And through our website, through the research and learning page on our website, 
you find some of the most popular ones you can access, including Mango Languages, if you want to learn another language, even Pirate, and the Heritage Quest resource or database, and that's for genealogical research. And those are great resources. And if you're going to do really in-depth research, though, you want to go all the way down to the bottom of the page. In the last little paragraph there, it says, would you like to find more databases and resources? And then below that little paragraph in purple, it says, find the complete list of STLS databases here. That's the link you want to click on if you're doing in-depth research. It's going to redirect you to the databases page on the STLS website. And you see a photo of the top portion of that page on the right side of your screen. So here we see a large portion of the list of databases that you can access for in-depth research on tons of topics, criminal justice, the culinary arts, diversity, gender studies. There's a health database. If you want to do health research, there's one on opposing viewpoints. If you have to write a paper on a subject that has two sides to the story, which is usually the case, you can look at that. There are several academic resources if you're a college or high school student doing research. There's even one on gardening and landscaping, on the hospitality industry, and a home improvement collection too. So lots of stuff on the STLS databases page, which you can access through our website, or you can go directly to that page by typing www.stls.org forward slash databases into your web browser. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, otherwise known as STLS. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Shemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can access StarCat online at starcat.stls.org. That's S-T-A-R-C-A-T dot S-T-L-S dot org. Or, as you might imagine, there's an app for that. It's called BookMine, and it's spelled a little differently. It's B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E, and that will give you direct access to StarCat through your mobile device. And you can find the BookMine app in your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app Libby. The Digital Catalog 2 is available to all card holders of all Southern Tier Library System member libraries, and you can find it online at stls.overdrive.com, or you can download the Libby app found in your app store to your mobile device. The Digital Catalog features ebooks, audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking and watching this and you're thinking, well, why is it just for? Corning Library card holders or SSC Library card holders. That's because this particular service, Hoopla, is one that the Southeast Stabenn County Library pays for. The others, the Digital Catalog and of course StarCat, are collection-wide catalogs and all member libraries contribute to them. So that's what the difference is. If you want to check out the Hoopla catalog online, you go to hooplaDigital.com and of course there's an app, Hoopla, for your mobile device. Social media. If you have questions about the library, you are welcome, of course, to go the traditional route and give us a call. But if you'd like to take the modern route and contact us via social media, you can do that too. The library has presences on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. The library's blogs. In alphabetical order, the first one is the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at ssclbook.club. You usually get two postings per month from this blog, which offers information on the monthly adult book club meetings, notes on the meetings, and information on books that members have recommended during each month's meetings. 
Our next blog is the Corning NY History blog. It's our local history blog found at CorningNYHistory.com. Posts come out on Fridays and include photos from the library's local history archive and old newspaper articles of the week. Then we have the Creation Stationery blog, which is the companion blog for the library's makerspace, found at creationstationery.com. Followed by Teen Tones, the library's blog for young adults, which is found at teentones.com. And Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, which is found at storymusings.blogspot.com. She has regular postings offering book reviews, recipes, and more. And finally, Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which is found at ssctech.com. It features several postings each week, including a link on Tuesdays to last week's Library Connection video. And as you may have guessed, Yours truly is the hostess for the Tech and Book Talk blog. And here are our general references of the week. Followed, of course, by the links for our catalogs. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great weekend and a great upcoming week.